Chris here from Friendly Frenzy Games and today I'm going to walk you through the explanation and solves for all of the puzzles in the Train Escape Room in Escape Simulator. This just so happens to be the last um, escape room in the Wild West DLC. Hopefully this video helps you. If it does, give us a like and subscribe to Friendly Frenzy Games for many more guides and walkthroughs just like this one. So starting off in this train, I think the quickest um, puzzle to kind of set us up and tackle first would be the snake oil briefcase. So as you can see, it's just found in the front corner of the train here. Um, can't get into it. We need to start with a key. So if we go back to where we started, there's a book of conductor notes just on the desk here. And it's got a couple of kind of tidbits of information about all the passengers that were on this train. So we have a tribal chief here who has interesting stories. There's a shady snake oil salesman. There is Mr. Harold Hughes, who's an inventor and also a toy maker who's obsessed with trains. So obviously, I mean, having the snake oil briefcase, we know what information we need is going to relate to the shady snake oil salesman here. And this is more or less saying that he was acting suspiciously around the big plant. So if we go up to the big plant here, we can give a quick inspect and there's a key just buried in the pot. Now we're going to use this key on the snake oil briefcase and you can see that this opens quite a few things for us here. There's a lot of different props and stuff in this briefcase. There's really only a couple of things that we do need. So starting just by kind of unbelt, um, un unhinging this kind of corner piece here we'll take the olives oils book we'll take all the bottles with labels on them i think there's only two so we'll take this one here for the gold emulsifier we're going to want to open this bottom pantry dish or bottom pantry door here for the kindling there's a totem piece up in the top right corner we don't have anything in the left we have the bottom right there's a token if you want to go and collect those i'll save that for later um, in the far left kind of um, batch of drawers here, we have another bottle for solvent and we have a mortar and pestle. Now that we've taken everything that we needed out of that case, I'm just going to drop it in the corner here and we can get a start on our puzzle. So as we see here, they're saying there's um, a little entry here saying about the herb chief smoking um, in his pipe. Uh, Echo Sage and if you see here there's a few things that we need for this super dissolver recipe we need a purple rock flower and it needs to be crushed we need a gold nugget we need Echo Sage we need gold emulsifier and solvent and then if we go through and actually look and see what we got out of that snake oil case we have our solvent here and we also have our gold emulsifier so we know we're looking for the gold nugget and we also need the purple flower the purple flower is actually just behind us here also in that same plant that we found the key. We can go ahead and pick that up and actually just pick up the mortar, the inspect the mortar and pestle and we drop the flower inside. Click the um, tool here and it'll crush it down and then you just want to collect the purple flower. Now that we've used that we can throw it into the corner of the room and again we had to crush the flower because this one is actually calling for crushed purple rock flower. And that's the first step in making our super dissolver recipe here. So crush the purple rock flower, put the crushed flower into the solvent. So we can go ahead and uncork the solvent. And we're just going to want to drop the purple flower inside. And you can see that it turns the solvent purple. Just throw the cork down. The next instruction for this solvent here is to add gold to the gold emulsifier. How we do this is to actually put together the entire totem pole. So as you can see, we got one piece just from the um, snake oil briefcase. There's another one on the blue bench here. And then we can pick up, there's actually how we need to build it in this photo on the table. So you can see there's four pieces. Currently we only have two. So what we need to do is go and collect the other two pieces. And we do that by um, opening the chief's briefcase here and there is a combination with some pictures on the front so it looks to be grass a mountain, some trees and if you remember in our olives oils book here there's a map under the echo sage entry and you can see here is just the same symbols that's on that front of that briefcase here so we have our grass we have a mountain we have a bridge or a stream, we have trees for the forest, and then we have the cave here. 
So what we have to do is just go through, start at the top, and put all of these symbols in the briefcase in order here. So we said we have the grass, and then we go to the mountains, and then we said it's a bridge or a stream. We found a stream, and then our next one is the trees or the forest, and our last one is the cave. As soon as we input that, we have that open. We have another piece of the totem pole here. We have a chief's pipe. And actually, if you look inside, just inside the bowl here is going to be the sage. So we can go ahead and collect that. And also in this briefcase is a train pin that we can put on our poster. So I'm just going to discard this and the peace pipe since we don't need those right now. And we can also put this um, blue poster pin that we got onto the train. It's going to help us solve one of our final puzzles, but just to kind of clean up as we go, what we have to do with this, as you can see, there's four different spaces for pins here. We have to put the appropriate pin um, in the right space, and it's just going to kind of match up with the pattern. So the one that we get from the Chief's briefcase is actually just going to finish off the car here, and you can see that this goes in line with our back train window. We have another one here too that is either part of one of two circles. It's actually just the top part. You can tell just by the corner um, button piece on the right side. So we have two of our pins there. Um, so we're good with that. <clears throat> so in going through here now, you can see our last totem piece puzzle is actually just under the um, train poster that we were working on putting the pins in. And now with this, we can take our picture and give it a quick inspect. Now that we have our four pieces, we just have to figure out the order of them. You can see that one piece on the bottom is pretty um, covered up by the sand here, but we do know, at least with the three pieces, what piece should be on the bottom. And you can see that we have kind of two pieces with open mouths here, and then we also have one with wings. So the part that is going to be on the bottom is this one here. You can see it's got a closed mouth and isn't that represented on the picture there. So we can go ahead and just kind of set this up on the floor. So that's our first piece here. Our next one kind of has frowned brows and they're thinner than the one up top and has kind of like an angry scowl mouth here. And it's just gonna be this piece. Um, you can tell by the mouth, by the eyebrows. It also has kind of like some um, raised ears here. So we can go ahead and stack that on top. Our next one, according to the picture, is the part with wings. That one's pretty obvious. And then obviously, again, our last one has the thicker brow. As soon as we complete that, the one with wings opens up to reveal the golden nugget inside. I'm just going to put this picture beside since we're done with that now. And we can go back again to our snake book here. And it says, so the next step is to add gold to the gold emulsifier. The gold emulsifier is just the second bottle that we pulled out of our briefcase. So we can go ahead and uncork that. And I'm just going to throw this across the room. Grab our gold emulsifier. And we want to just drop the nugget in on top here. Actually, yeah, just right inside the bottle there. And you can see that it turns this solution gold. And we can go to our next step. So it says now to add the emulsified gold to the solvent. So we can pull up our solvent and we want to click and drag the gold emulsifier on top. And that's just going to pour this inside. You can see the purple has now turned to kind of a brownie mix here. I'm just going to throw this across the room. And we can go back to find our last step in creating this super dissolver is to put the echo sage into the bottle. So the echo sage is just the green stuff from the pipe here. Pull up our solvent, click and drag the echo sage, and you can see as soon as we do that, it turns the solution blue. What we're going to want to do with this solvent is just kind of down in the bottom corner here. It says um, it dissolves stains, rust, and metal. Don't drop it on the floor, which is fine. We're not going to be using it on the floor, but because there's no other way to get into this second car here, we're going to use the um, super dissolver loot solution just on the chain link that's kind of keeping it locked here. So we're done with all of that. You can see now that this door will be able to unlock. I'm just gonna throw that book out of the way here and we can unlock our door now. So basically once we get into here, there's a couple other things available to us. Obviously there's another train pin here. We'll collect that for now and we can solve it bakes once we get back into that car. Um, where a good starting point is in this room is to just pick up this train pamphlet here 
and give it a quick inspect and obviously there's a couple of different train cars um, with some wheel markings here and it looks like different kind of stops along a route and this is going to be important for our toy maker briefcase that has a train and our stations on it so what we want to do with this one is essentially this diagram is telling us that the black kind of wheel every time that shows up in a combination is going to be clicked first our kind of grayish looking one is going to be clicked second our light gray is going to be clicked third and our white wheel is always clicked last so we can pin this up to the top corner and pull up our toy maker briefcase again you have to start this combination by hitting the lever here and it's going to get the wheels to roll and we're first looking for the combination between dream spring and tomb run so you can see that this here the actual diagram is our first solution here and again clicking the black um, wheel first um, is how we need to solve this combination. So you can see our black wheel is in the second position, so we'll go ahead and click that first. Our gray wheel is in the third position, so we can click that second. Our lighter gray wheel is in the last position, but we'll click that third. And then finally, our white wheel is in the first position, but it needs to be clicked fourth. And you can see that that resets our stations up top here. We now need to put in the combination between Pine Stone and Gold Branch. Where if you follow this map here, Pine Stone and Gold Branch is this bottom pairing here. So we'll hit our lever again. And again, we're looking for where the order of our black wheel shows up. This time it's in our third position, but we know because it's the black wheel, we have to click it first. So we'll click number three. And now our darker gray is in the first position, so we'll click that second. We have our lighter gray in the second position, we'll click that third. And we have our white wheel in the last position, we'll click that fourth. And that again resets another set of instructions here. So we're looking to solve for Tomb Run Station and Pine Stone Station. So we'll again, reset this puzzle. And you can see here that everything's kind of inverted. Our black wheel is in the first position, just up under the conductor's kind of cabin here. We'll go ahead and click that first. Our next one is the gray one, and it's in the third position, so we'll click that second. Our light gray now is at the front of the car, or in the last position. Again, it's flipped around here, so it looks like it's in first on the actual drawing, but it is in the last position when we're looking at it, just up at the front of the train. And finally, our white wheel is in the second position. We'll click that last. So as soon as you do that, you see that we've unlocked two billiard balls and a toy train. And we can just kind of leave this aside right now, and I'm going to unpin that until later. We also have a inventor's briefcase in the top of this kind of train car here, just up on the shelving. And what we have is a um, kind of pattern that we have to recreate. So there's a couple of different ways that you can solve this or that you need a couple of different steps anyways to solve this combination. So the first is you have to get the actual shapes correct. So you can see right now we have everything in a top facing position. We need to get our first um, order here or our first position faced towards um, the south or our downward part here. We can leave the top because this matches up and now we need to have our third and fourth positions both, fa both facing to the right or to the east. So we have that there now and we can flip back to the book of conductors notes. If you remember here, Harold Hughes himself is the inventor. We know we have the inventor's briefcase and you can see that AC and DC um, is highlighted. What we're gonna wanna do with this is just input AC in our first two and put in DC as our last two. And you can see that that's gonna open that crate now as well. So we can take this projector card and take our third billiard ball and just leave this briefcase here. And we are good with that. And we've completed everything in this room. We do wanna make sure that we take the lighthouse puzzle book too. That'll be our next puzzle. Um, but just as we're in this room, I'm going to quickly place this pin. So the pin that we get from the second car back here, you can see, is going to kind of finish off our second rounded piece of the front of the train here. And as I said, we can go ahead now and um, do our lighthouse puzzle. 
So these lighthouses, there's six of them in this book, and if you can tell, there's six lamps in this train. And each one is going to correspond to a lighthouse. Some of them have symbols, they, I mean they all have symbols, but some of them are very clearly um, marked from the book. Others you have to do a little bit of reading. Um, what makes the most sense, you can go from lowest to highest or go from highest to lowest. I like going, sorry, from highest to lowest. So obviously our tallest is 72 meters here is the Grand Water um, Lighthouse. So we can start by finding this one. If we do a quick look around the um, lamps here, we see there isn't anything that would resemble water on any of these lamps. But if we do a closer inspection of its description, it says about the nation's central railway hub. So we did notice a train here on this one, so we can figure that that one relates. And again, we said it's the tallest, so we want to put it in its tallest position or the first position here. Second tallest would be Feather Point at 61 meters. And there is a feather on here that we can see on top of the lamp here. So just straight ahead of us. We're going to go ahead and put that in the second position because it's the second tallest. Our third tallest at 50 meters is Scorpion Peak. And if you remember over here, there is a scorpion just right here. It's already in the third position, so we can leave this one. Next, we have Proud Wolf at 43 meters, and there is also a symbol for the wolf. It's actually just kind of the one howling at the moon here. So it's in the third position currently. We want to drag it down to four because it's fourth tallest. And now we have our last two um, lighthouses here between Foam Rise and Crooked Tooth. So the next tallest would be Foam, foam Rise at 35 meters. And you can see here, there wasn't anything about foam or water that we had, but there is saying, there is this saying that it's the most expensive lighthouse ever built. And behind us, there is a, I guess it's a little further down here. I did see a dollar sign, yeah. So the dollar sign just on this lamppost here would indicate the most expensive lighthouse ever built. And again, we said it was second tallest, or second shortest, which is gonna put it in the fifth position. And lastly, we have our Crooked Tooth at 27 meters, making it the shortest lighthouse. So we just gotta find where our tooth symbol is here and drag it down to the final position. And you can see the lamps turn on and that also opens a compartment over here, the compartment with the lighthouse kind of symbol on it and we have a painting handle. So I'm just gonna throw our lighthouse book out because we won't need that again. We're going to need this painting handle, and also underneath that is a projector card as well. If you remember, we've picked one up already, but where this is going to come in handy is we've got to come back into this second car here, put the painting handle just over top of, um, or just to the side of the um, flower paintings here, and we can roll down the screen. And you can see very clearly in the uh, red letters there that it's saying to insert a projector card. That's because as we turned the lamps on, it also brought down our projector and turned it on. So it has its default card in there, which is telling us to insert a projector card. And we have two cards from the puzzles and the room that we've collected. You can see that by starting with the first one, we've put the, right, the first one in correctly because it's saying one out of four in the bottom corner here, but obviously we need to line it up a little better just to make sure that our circles are highlighting directions and that our um, balls are lining up with the pockets properly. So with this puzzle, what we're gonna wanna do is obviously, this needs to be done in order so the um, numbers on the bottom of the pages are important. And this is essentially giving us our starting point. So we have a point of reference essentially being a North Star and you can see that it's marked on the table that it's the um, biggest kind of star, boldest star just up in the corner here. You can see all the other stars are a little smaller. So this is our point of reference on here. So obviously looking at the table, this is the top of the table. And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna start in, if we look at it, it's gonna start in the top left corner here for ball number one, but then we also need to factor in these directions. So our first step is to walk it down one. We're gonna walk it to the right one. And then as our instructions come back, you can see that it's flipped. Um, but our third instruction is to walk it up one. So we know if we look from over 
here, and again, our reference point being the top of the table, we're gonna go ahead and put our first ball into this top right pocket. And as you can see, there was um, the bottom of the page said that there was um, four different directions or four different positions for the balls. We currently only have three balls and that's because there is one just in the billiard ball slot here that we can collect to. So we have our first ball placed. We can go ahead and place our second one now. So wait for the instructions to flip back here. You can see as soon as we flip back to two that it's going to start in our bottom right corner. We need to go diagonally left one. So we have the middle and we'll wait for this to flip back again. And then we go to the right one and then we go to our bottom left corner here for one. So our next ball is just going to be placed in the lower left corner here. And now because this projector card is only flipping between two kind of positions, we can take this one out and put in our second card. And you can see at the bottom here that we have four out of four. It's gonna flip over to three out of four and we just need to do the same thing and recreate these directions. The special thing, or I guess a point, um, a special note for the second projector card is that you can see these ones are double circled. It means that you have to essentially do that direction twice. So for this one, we're going to start in the middle on our right and go up one and then down two. So we're going to go up one from here. So it'll be here and then down two. So we're going to be in our bottom right corner and then we're going to go diagonal to the left and it is going to be our middle left um, pocket here. Go ahead and plug that in. And we can wait for our fourth instruction here. So you can see we're starting in the bottom left corner, we're going up two, we're going to the right one, and we are going to the left one. So it's going to be our top left pocket, just if you can see right here. And as soon as you um, follow those instructions, the table converts to a train set, which is really cool, and we are completed with the billiard puzzle. So if we pick this up, we can see obviously that we have our last pin, so we can go ahead and place this just in the front kind of grating of the train. And as soon as we do that, it unlocks um, a few dials. It's got a kind of handcuff symbol on it on, on this dial here. We have some booze here, a train here, and a bank here. And this is ultimately where we're plugging in our last combination to escape the train. So that's for a later puzzle. The instructions that we have now are just to um, essentially put this toy train to follow the same journey as the current large train that we're on. And you can see that by this poster, this here, Dream Spring, Tomb Run, Pine Stone, Gold Branch, and Dream Spring, Dream Spring is the um, path that our current train is on. So we know that we have to recreate that with the miniature train here. And we can also use our train pamphlet to kind of detail what each city is kind of known for. So again here, Dream Spring being the central railway hub. So we see the central railway hub is right here. Tomb Run is most known for many jails. So we can find our jail on here is just the green building. So we know that's gonna be our second position that we have to get the train. Pine Stone is known for its saloons and that's gonna be our third position here. So our third position is the saloon. So we have to get it next to come down to this corner. And then lastly, Gold Branch is known for the banking hub. And our banking hub is just up at the top here. And then again, we know we have to reset everything back down to the train hub here. So what you're going to want to do is kind of set this up as best you can without putting the train on because it's definitely easier when the train isn't moving to be able to kind of get a bearing on your directions here. So as soon as we put the train car down, it's going to start to run as long as we don't keep it connected, it just sits parked. So what we're gonna do is kind of visualize the route. So we know we have to first get it. It's gonna start here anyway, so we're good there, but we need to get it next to this green building. So if you follow this track along, we have to make a series of adjustments along the route to make sure that it follows the path that we want it to follow. So as soon as we start here, we know that this is pointed to the left, which we want because it's going to take this first loop and this is staying left. So it's gonna follow this loop. 
As soon as we get here, this is pointed to the right, so it's going to keep it on this track. We want to switch this one because we don't want it to circle back to the train station. We want it to go down to the jail. So we need to flip this one to the right, which means it's going to follow this loop down here. And then it's going to take this path here. So we want to make sure that, again, to make sure that it doesn't divert to the train station, we want this to go right so that it's going to loop around the jail. So we can go ahead now and put our train car on, now knowing that we have our first couple of instructions set up. But what we need to do also is actually just with this constructor's um, notebook again, or conductor note, we see that the toy maker who was obsessed with trains collaborated with Mr. Hughes on um, secret mechanisms for his rail car. And that's important because we know obviously that we got the toy maker from the or the toy train from the toy maker's chest and the inventor was looking at new ways to actually run this for him so we picked up kindling at the very beginning of this um, in this kind of drawer under the hint button here there is a lighter if we use our lighter hit the trigger to open it and the flint to light it we want to use the lighter on our kindling here to get it to burn as soon as we do we can throw the lighter but what we want to do now is you can see that there's a gold compartment highlighted on the train for like a steam engine almost. We want to put the kindling inside, which is going to get the um, toy train to actually power. So as soon as we stick the train car on here, you'll see that it'll start its route. So again, we want it to hit the bank and we can follow this along. And then we got to get it down to the saloon here. So it's going to follow and take this loop and it's going to go down to the jail. Now to get it to go to the saloon, we want to keep it on our left track here and then we want to turn this to the right turn this to the left so that it follows down to our saloon which is awesome so now it's going to come up to our bank and we need to make sure that it follows this left this left route here turn both to the left and it's going to come back down and reset at our um, train station here and now you can see that it's flipped some numbers here so we know the number on the jail is one we know the number on the train station is eight the number on the saloon is three and the number on the bank is five so as I was showing you earlier we just have to match those numbers up to their symbols on the dial here to be able to escape the room so we said our jail is the green building and it is number one so we can use the dial to put that in we said our train station number is eight which is the last number here, so we can plug eight in. We need the number for our saloon, which is the pink building, and it is number three. So we'll put three in. And then the number on our bank, which is the kind of light blue building, is five. So the final combination for this is one, three, five, eight. As soon as you do that, you'll see that this unlocks our key. Run it back to basically where we started the room here and we have escaped the train. We've completed the Wild West DLC series of Rooms and Escape Simulator. Very cool mixture of um, logic and lock key combination puzzles. I also really liked too that with the exception of the train, there was a different way to escape each of the rooms. It wasn't all just solely based on finding a key to be able to escape the door. If this video helped you at all, give us a like, drop a comment, and subscribe to Friendly Frenzy Games for more guides, tips, and tricks.